solve each equation. I'm going to do the largest one for you. We have x squared equals 121. So if I were to square a number and have it come out to 121, we would want 11 times 11 equals 121. That means that x has to be 11. But keep in mind, negative 11 times negative 11 also gives us positive 121. So you can use both of those values and square them to get positive 121. What number times itself equals 1? What number times the same number equals 36? About 64, 49, or 25? In this activity, we're looking for which one does not belong. Take a second to look at all four boxes and see if you can determine which one does not belong. You can pause here if you need to. You can make a claim that they all belong. 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, and 5 squared is 25, so these both go together. This is the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. In a right triangle that has a leg of 3, 4, and what's called a hypotenuse, that is 5. In this picture, there are 9 red tiles, there are 16 blue tiles, and there are 25 tiles altogether. So you can make an argument that they all belong. In a right triangle, there are very specific sides. We have two legs, A and B, which can be swapped out. A could be here and B could be here. But both of those legs come off of the right angle. So they're extended from that right angle, the two legs. So I have A and B. And the longest side is called the hypotenuse and it is always called C. So these two are interchangeable. They both come out of that right angle. We can swap A and B, but C always has to be the longest side. For problems one through four, find the length of the hypotenuse C. I'm gonna write a couple of things up here as a reference for the remaining problems. The Pythagorean theorem says this, and then I'm also going to include a list of squares. So like 8 squared, we'll just have a reference that we can look over at, since we're not going to use a calculator in this lesson. Okay, so using the Pythagorean theorem, we're going to try and find C. I need 6 squared plus 8 squared equals C squared. Remember, the two legs, A and B, come off of that right angle. Over here in my chart, I have 6 squared is 36, and 8 squared is 64. Thirty six plus sixty four is one hundred. So what number squared is one hundred? Right here we can see whoop, we can see that ten squared is one hundred. That means C is equal to ten. On this one I have 
5 squared plus 12 squared, because those are both coming off of the right angle, equals c squared. 5 squared is 25. 12 squared is 144. And if we add those two together, that would give us 169, which is right here. So C is 13. In this one, I have 0.4 squared plus 0.3 squared equals C squared. Well, 4 squared is 16, so 0.4 squared would be 0.16. 3 squared is 9, but we're going to have two decimal spots, so 0 0.09. If I add 16 and 9 together, that gives me 25 in the decimal form. And 25 is 5 squared, but 0.25 would be 0 0.5 squared. So C is 0 0.5. In this one, we have 3 squared and 5 fourths squared. Keep in mind, parentheses should be used for fractions so that the square is applied to the numerator and to the denominator. 3 squared is 9, 5 squared is 25, and 4 squared is 16. Now I can change 9 into 16ths by multiplying 9 by 16. Nine times six is fifty-four. Nine times one is nine. Nine plus five more is fourteen. One hundred and forty-four plus twenty-five is one hundred and sixty-nine over sixteen. So one hundred and sixty-nine is thirteen squared. And 16 is 4 squared, so C has to be 13 fourths. Here I have 4 squared plus 9 squared equals C squared. 4 squared is 16, 9 squared is 81. 6 plus 1 is a 7, 1 plus 8 is a 9, giving us c squared equals 97. Well, that's between 9 and 10, because 9 squared is 81, and 10 squared is 100. So 97 is between both of those values. So it's actually going to be that C is a decimal somewhere between 9 and 10. So for problems 6 through 8, we are going to determine which two consecutive whole numbers the length of the hypotenuse C is between. So just like in problem 5 where we said it was between 9 and 10, in this one we're going to determine which whole numbers it is between. So I have 3 squared plus 3 squared equals C squared. 3 squared is 9, plus another 9 is 18. Well, 18 is between 4 squared and 5 squared, so we're going to say that C is between 5 and 4 using those symbols. So C is less than 5, but C is greater than 4. So it's somewhere in between 4 and 5 because 18 is in between 16 and 25. Here I have 10 squared plus 1 squared equals c squared. 10 squared is 100, 1 squared is 1, 
and 100 plus 1 is 101. Well, 101 is between 10 squared and 11 squared. So C is between 10 and 11. We've got 7 squared and 12 squared equals C squared. 7 squared gives us 49. 12 squared is 144. 9 plus 4 is 13. So it would be 193. One ninety three, that's between one hundred and sixty nine and one hundred and ninety six. So C has to be between the numbers thirteen and fourteen. This symbol is called a square root, and a square root is used to tell us exactly what value you would have in situations where it's between the perfect squares. So in this last problem, when we had 193, we could use this square root symbol to say the square root of 193 is our answer. Instead of saying C is between, 13 and 14, we could say C is equal to the square root of 193. This gives us exact values. So in our first problem, when we encountered the square root of, or the value of 97, back in problem 5, instead of saying that it was between 9 and 10, we could have written it as C is equal to what's called the square root of 97. It says, circle all the expressions that do not represent a whole number. If I were to take the square root of 1, well, 1 is 1 squared, so that one represents a whole number. 4, the square root of 4, would be 2. That one also represents a whole number. 100 is on my list. The square root of 100 would equal 10. 81 is on my list. The square root of 81 is 9, so we're going to cross that one out. 10 is not on my list. 27 is not on my list. 8 is not on the list, and neither is 62. So all of these do not come out to whole numbers. It has to be some whole number squared, like in the 81, the 1, and the 4, and the 100 case. Problems 10 and 11 use square root notation to express the length of the hypotenuse. So we have 3 squared plus 8 squared equals c squared. 3 squared is 9. 8 squared is 64. 9 plus 64 is 73. So instead of saying that c is between 8 and and 9, we are going to use the exact value that C is equal to what's called the square root of 73. And for this one, we have 5 squared plus 6 squared equals C squared. 5 squared is 25. 6 squared is 36. 5 plus 6 is 11. 
So we have 61. Instead of saying that it is between 7 and 8, we are going to say it is equal to the square root of 61. Please make sure your workbook is filled in and your warm up is complete. I did want to mention that the reason we have the square root or cases where we just say that c is equal to or between values, rather than using the negatives in these cases, Distance on a triangle is always positive. We're not going to say that the side length of a triangle is negative 13 or in between negative 13 and negative 14. They're always going to be positive. We did see in the warm up that in many cases the square root could be a positive or a negative value. But when we're talking specifically about distances, we always want the positive version for C.